hello student we will continue with the video and then after the video we will continue with the next part and then compare results there are four basic steps in this rule next is completely randomized block design this is a second method of formal experimental design Randomized block design is similar to completely randomized design as there is only one treatment experimental variable being used. However, in the randomized block design, a second variable known as blocking variable is included whose impact the researcher wants to control while measuring the impact of the treatment variable on the dependent variable. For example, a researcher wants to conduct an experiment to determine which environment is best suited for studying a library in one zone room or outside. A total of 30 students from a university voluntarily participated in the experiment. Now, the researcher assumes that gender has no effect on the results. So here, blocking variable will be gender. Let us understand this with the diagram on the next slide. And the basic rule or the sequence of activities will be sampling, blocking, random groupings, treatment, and then compare results. The basic four steps are same as in the previous method. In the previous method, we studied four steps that were sampling, random groupings, treatment, and compare result. In this method, one additional step is there that is blocking. That is a step number two. Here, additional element blocking has been introduced that's why this method is called complete randomized block design. Let us understand it with the help of a conceptual framework. First, assign the people into blocks based on the characteristics that is expected to influence the response of the experimental units to the treatment. Then a completely randomized design is performed within each block. As we are carrying on our previous example, we have an example of 30 university students example 30 university students example here the blocking variable is gender and we have divided these 30 students into two blocks male block and female block in male block there are 12 students in female block there are 18 students so this is block one male block is block one and female block is block two this is an additional element in this method so let us understand it. We have taken a sample of 30 university students. Then blocking has been done in block one, male. Blo block two is female. There are 12 male students and 18 female students. Then the third step is random groupings. We have randomly assigned the male students in group in three groups, group one, two, and three. In the same way, Random groupings have been done of the female candidate, female students in group one, two, and three. Four males in each group and six females in each group. Now the treatments are applied. The treatment one is means the group one will study in library, group two will study in their own room, and group three will study outside. In the same way, in male and female, both the groups in the female. Group 1 will study in library and gr uh, group 2 will study in their own room and group 3 will study outside. Now we will compare the results of both the blocks. Here, we blocks the results ko compare ke after applying the treatment. So here, one additional element that is blocking. We have done the blocking of the students into two blocks, male and female. Then we have randomly assigned the groups, then we applied the treatment, then compare results. So this is completely randomized, randomized block design. Next is Latin square design. Latin square design is more effective than the randomized block design. In Latin square design, the researcher isolates two major variations causing extraneous variables in addition to the treatment influence. This design assumes that there is no interaction between the factors being measured. This design requires an expert experimenter to effectively conduct the experiment. It is a complex design as compared to the 
previous ones because it requires more efforts post in time. Latin square design enables the researcher to control two blocking variables while measuring the impact of an experimental variable on the dependent variable. The Latin square design, however, requires that each of the two extraneous or blocking variables and the treatment variables be divided into an equal number of levels or categories. Let us understand it with the help of an example. Suppose a researcher wants to study the effect of varying fertility level of lead, different quality of seeds with different fertilizers or crop. A researcher study करना चाहता है effect कि एक land के different fertility levels का, different quality of seeds का और different fertilizers use करने का crop पर क्या effect पड़ता है, हमारी productivity पर क्या effect पड़ेगा. So here a dependent variable is crop and independent variables are fertility level of land of various plots that is IV1. Quality of seed, IV1 means independent variable 2. Quality of fertilizer, independent variable 3. So we have used three independent variables, different fertility levels of land, quality of seed and quality of fertilizer and dependent variable is crop. Let us understand this example with the following visuals. Like we have taken different fertility levels of land of various crops. Plot 1, plot 2, plot 3, plot 4, and plot 5. We have taken 5 plots. We have taken 5 quality of seeds that are seed 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And we are using 5 types of fertilizers that are A, B, C, D, and E. These are the independent variables and we will see the effect of these 3 independent variables on crop that is dependent variable. So, here we have taken plot 1. Mein, fertilizers are A, B, C, D and E. Plot 1 mein, A type of fertilizer use kiya hai, soil ki productive, soil ki fertility ko increase karne ke liye. Plot B, uh, 2 mein humne use kiya hai B, plot 3 mein C, 4 mein D and plot 5 mein E. Now, we will use Fertilizers B, C, D, E and A in plot 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. यहाँ पर जो हम fertilizers लेंगे, वो इस तरह से लेंगे, कोई भी fertilizer एक plot में repeat ना हो. Like अगर plot 1 है, तो उसमें हमारा same fertilizer फिर से repeat नहीं होगा. Different type के fertilizers हम हर time में use करेंगे. So next time C, D, E, A and B in the same way. Repetition नहीं होगी किसी भी fertilizer की same plot. After using the fertilizers to increase the fertility of soil in different plots, हमने यहाँ पर क्या किया? We put the seeds. We sowed the seeds. यहाँ पर seeds को डाला गया हर एक plot में. अब हमने plot one, two, three, four and five में seed one को use किया है. Seed one डाला गया. इसी तरह से फिर seed two को हर एक plot में डाला गया. Seed 3 को, Seed 4 and Seed 5. तो यहाँ पर हमने fertilizer mix किया सबसे पहले soil में, हर एक plot में. और उसको हमें repeat नहीं करना, next time हमने seeds को use किया. Then, we get, we get various 25 outcomes of different types of seeds with varying fertility levels of land and different fertilizers. तो यहाँ पर हमें क्रॉप के रूप में आउटकम मिलेगी जो हमने डिफरेंट टाइप्स के सीड्स लिए हैं डिफरेंट टाइप के फर्टिलाइजर्स लिए हैं और उससे हमारी लैंड की फर्टिलिटी पे इफेक्ट पड़ेगा जो हमारे डिफरेंट प्लॉट्स लिए गए हैं तो उसका हमारी क्रॉप्स पे क्या इफेक्ट पड़ता है वो हमें आउटकम के रूप में मिलेगा जो कि हमारा डिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल है नेक्स्ट इज फैक्टोरियल डिजाइन फैक्टोरियल डिजाइन इज यूज्ड टू एग्जामिन द इफेक्ट दैट द मैनिपुलेशन ऑफ एट लीस्ट टू इंडिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल्स simultaneously at different levels has upon the dependent variable. Factorial design allows the researcher to measure not only the primary or main effect but also the interaction effects of different levels of the independent variables. The impact that each independent variable has on the dependent variable is referred to as the main effect and the dependent variable may also be impacted by the interaction of the independent variable. This is called interaction effect. 
The design of an experiment addresses the questions outlined above by stipulating the following factors that are the first is the factors to be tested, the levels of those factors, and the structure and layout of experimental runs or conditions. Let us understand it with the help of an example. We are taking an example of a cake. हम यहाँ पे केक बनाना चाहते हैं ओवन में हम केक बनाना चाहते हैं तो आपको केक बनाने के लिए क्या क्या फैक्टर्स चाहिए फैक्टर्स आर कोल द वेरिएबल्स और द इनपुट्स क्या आपको वेरिएबल्स चाहिए फैक्टर्स फर्स्ट फैक्टर होगा ओवन और ओवन में लेवल क्या होगा हमारा दे थ्री थिंग्स फैक्टर लेवल्स एंड रिस्पॉन्सिस अब केक बनाने के लिए फर्स्ट फैक्टर है आपका ओवन उसका लेवल लेवल उसकी सेटिंग क्या की जाएगी उसका टेम्परेचर कितना रखना है आपको सेकेंड फैक्टर इज शुगर शुगर का लेवल क्या होगा यू कैन मेजर द क्वांटिटी ऑफ शुगर विद द हेल्प ऑफ अ कप कि कितने कप आप शुगर के उसमें यूज कर रहे हो कितनी क्वांटिटी शुगर की यूज कर रहे हो दैट इज अ लेवल फ्लोर अगेन फ्लोर का लेवल क्या होगा मेजरिंग कप हो सकता है आपका कितनी क्वांटिटी फ्लोर की आप यूज करोगे केक बनाने में एग्स हाउ मेनी नंबर ऑफ एग्स यू आर यूजिंग कितने एग्स आप उसमें यूज करोगे सो दीज फैक्टर्स एंड देयर लेवल्स इट गिवस रिस्पॉन्सिस रिस्पॉन्सिस आर द आउटकम्स और द करेक्टरिस्टिक्स तो ये जितना जो भी हमने फैक्टर्स यूज किया है उसका कितना कितना लेवल हमने यूज किया है उसका हमारे केक के टेस्ट कलर और कंसिस्टेंसी पे इफेक्ट आ सकता है तो दिस इज द करेक्टरिस्टिक्स टेस्ट कलर एंड कंसिस्टेंसी सो फैक्टर इज द इनपुट्स टू द प्रोसेसिस फैक्टर्स कैन बी क्लासिफाइड एज आइर कंट्रोलेबल और अनकंट्रोलेबल वेरिएबल्स इन दिस केस द कंट्रोलेबल वेरिएबल्स आर द इनग्रेडियंट फॉर द केक एंड एंड ओवन दैट द केक इज बेक्ड इन द कंट्रोलेबल वेरिएबल्स विल बी रेफर टू थ्रू आउट द मेटीरियल एज फैक्टर्स नोट दैट द इनग्रेडियंट्स लिस्ट वो शॉर्ट एंड फॉर दिस एग्जाम्पल दिस कुड बी मैनी अदर इनग्रेडियंट्स दैट हैव अ सिग्निफिकेंट इफेक्ट ऑन द एंड रिजल्ट that can be oil water flavoring mixing methods sequence of mixing cook so these can be the different factors next is level what is level levels or settings of each factor in the study example include in the oven temperature settings and the particular amounts of sugar flour and eggs chosen for evaluation next is response response or output of the experiment in the case of cake baking the taste consistency appearance of the cake are the measurable outcomes potentially influenced by the factors and their respective levels let us understand it with the help of two experiments we have taken experiment 1 and experiment 2 here there are two independent variables teaching method a is an independent variable and teaching method b is another independent variable in both experiments level 1 is low iq of the students level ab yahan par hamare paas do tarah ke students hain ek wo students hain jinka iq level low hai dusra hai jinka iq level high hai so yahan par jab humne दोनों तरह के स्टूडेंट्स पे लो आई क्यू वाले और हाई क्यू लेवल हाई आई क्यू वाले स्टूडेंट्स पर टीचिंग मेथड ए अप्लाई किया और टीचिंग मेथड बी अप्लाई किया तो हमारे पास कुछ मीन स्कोर्स आए हैं अब इन मीन स्कोर्स को कंपेयर किया जाएगा दोनों एक्सपेरिमेंट्स में तो जो हमारा जो फर्स्ट है उसमें हमारा जो टीचिंग मेथड ए और बी उन दोनों का सेम इफेक्ट नहीं आया डिफरेंट इफेक्ट आया है दोनों इंडिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल्स का सो इंट्रैक्शन आकर्स व्हेन द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ वन इंडिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल इज डिफरेंट एट डिफरेंट लेवल्स ऑफ अनदर इंडिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल अ स्ट्रॉन्ग इंट्रैक्शन द इफेक्ट ऑफ वन लेवल ऑफ द इंडिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल इज अपोजिट ऑफ द अदर लेवल एंड द सेकेंड एक्सपेरिमेंट बोथ द लाइन आर पैरल मीन्स टीचिंग मैथड ए एंड टीचिंग मैथड बी दे आर हैविंग द सेम इफेक्ट no interaction the lines are parallel the effect of both independent variables is same so this was the factorial design the types of factorial design factorial design is of two types simple factorial design and complex factorial design it is also known simple factorial design is also known as 2 by 2 square design and this design we can examine the interaction between the treatments and levels and hence can can conclude whether the treatments and levels are independent or not a combination of one level for each factor in the experiment 
complex factorial design. This design is the extension of simple factorial design. As the number of variables increase, greater would be the interaction. As a result, it becomes more complex. An experiment containing all possible experimental treatments possibly replicated a number of times. So these were the types of formal experimental design. I hope you must have enjoyed this video lecture. If this now we will proceed to the next point that is sampling. Now the next part is sampling. The name itself is showing that there you have to do some sampling. You all know what is sampling mean. So in a simple sense, what sampling it refers is to the method used to select a given number of people or things. It's not always the people in case of microbiology and even in the science. It's It may be some different samples that we use to take soil sample or water sample. So those things from a population. So even in case of uh, soil sample or water sample, a big population is there and you're not going to take the whole population some part of that population you are going to take. So uh, a sample can be defined as a smaller set of data that is chosen or selected from a larger population by using a predefined selection method. So you are going to use a particular method for a sampling. So <clears throat> it may be termed as a process of selecting a few from a bigger group. So you are going to take some part of that particular uh, group. You are not, you, it is not possible always to uh, study the whole group or the whole population. So you have to select a, some small part of the population which will actually predict exactly the same piece of information uh, and it will react or you can say it will react. It is, uh, it is considered that it will react in the same way uh, if you give some situation uh, and whatever outcome you are going to get from that small sampling, you can consider it as a, uh, it is the outcome for the bigger one too. So uh, these are the some sampling terminology. So whenever you are going to deal with the sampling, these terminologies you have to uh, always, you will come across always. That is population. It is a, any group of individual that has one or more characteristics in common and that are of in, and that are of interest to the research so uh, it means the population is the big uh, group of the individuals which will have near about similar characteristics common characteristics and it depends on what is the interest of that particular researcher it will choose the population accordingly then the next is sampling unit, which are non-overlapping collection of the elements from the population that cover the entire population. So in sampling unit, you are not going to take the same person. Suppose you are making three or four groups. You are not putting all of them in the same group. So for some example, <clears throat> um, I want to work on the melanin production by the different individual. So I will select three groups one a, or i will select two groups one is black that is uh, the individuals which are having black color and the other one which are having white color obviously then uh, i want to so whenever i'm taking uh, the sample from the population obviously i will put all the black in one group and all the white people in another group and obviously the sampling units will not be overlapping. So I cannot put the white one into black one or black one into the white one. So whenever such type of sampling units are there, you are not taking the same individual or the same sample for the same groups, then you can say that it is the sampling unit. A sampling frame is a list of sampling units. So in that particular uh, sampling uh, units, that is in a sampling frame. So what is the sampling frame for this? All white, whatever, suppose 1000 people are there, 1000 white people are there, 1000 black people are there, out of which I'm going to take, uh, suppose 200 white people and 200 black people. So that is the sampling frame. 
and uh, the units or the people which I'm taking is, uh, you can consider it as a sampling unit. And what is sample? As we have uh, already seen that sample is small population, uh, proportion of the population that is selected for the observation and analysis. This is very important. So you are not going to observe the whole population. You are just going to select some part, some small part of that population and whatever experiment you will do or whatever observation and analysis you will do, that you will do only for the sample, not for the population. So in the figure, you can see this is the whole population. You can see many are there and then some are selected, right? This is the sampling frame. So out of which the group which I have selected that uh, 200 uh, or 300 people I have selected and from that again I'm collecting few of them I'm choosing on the basis of so for example color that uh, white people are there and black people are there accordingly I'm choosing it right so uh, inferential statistics uh, uh, this term also you will get come across whenever you are working with the sampling part so it refers to a statistical technique that is used for drawing conclusions. So it is always very, very important that whenever you are trying to do any experiment and if you want to prove it that this is uh, whatever change you want to prove or whatever uh, your result you want to prove that they are good or bad. So if you want to say or use the significant different word then at that time the statistics is very important because until and unless you don't use statistic you cannot say that whatever results you are getting they are significantly good or significantly bad so drawing such conclusion statistics is used so it is called as statistical inferential statistics that is the statistical technique that you are used to draw the conclusions about uh, the sample and uh, as you are drawing conclusion for the sample you can also conclude for the population then statistics you all know that this is the branch of science which is known as measurement of the characteristics of the element included in the research sample and as i said that until and unless you don't actually apply the statistic you will not be able to uh, say that this is the correct result or you cannot go till the accuracy then when these measurements are related to the parent population these are referred to as parameters so whenever you are going to uh, do some measurements and which are related to the parent population so some part of the sample you are studying but they are actually related or referred with the main population they are called as parameters <clears throat> and then the sampling error so whatever sampling methods you are using accordingly you may face some sampling error because every time you cannot take the whole population you just cannot take the whole population so at that time these error may occur this may error may uh, arise on the account of sampling so this occurs due to the certain amount of inaccuracy in the collection of the information so that can be inaccuracy in the collection of sampling in case of science uh, that is soil sample or water sample or that is in uh, collection of some uh, inaccurate information in case of uh, commerce or uh, art students or psychology students whenever they are collecting some information there's some data from the human population right so <clears throat> that sampling error is uh, always there that uh, needs to be deal with and this sampling error is always inversely proportional is always inversely proportional now um, how to reduce this sampling error what is exactly the sampling error now there are two methods by which we can reduce the sampling error one is increase the sample size so uh, from the population how much many uh, feasibly you can take the sample that will uh, increase the sample size and as the sample size will increase automatically the error will get in uh, decrease so out of 1000 if I am selecting 700 people so obviously 300 only remain so definitely uh, it will reduce the error whatever information I am going to collect from 
all over those 700 people is near to the correct. It's, it is more accurate, right? So uh, it will automatically reduce the sampling error. <coughs> because, uh, <coughs> and the second is stratification. Now, if all the population units are homologous or homogeneous, or the population has the same characteristics feature. So suppose, as I said, that uh, I've taken, uh, I just want to find out whether a pigmentation or the melanin formation. What is melanin? It is the pigment and because of which we have, we get uh, uh, tanned. So uh, you all know that you are using sunscreen because you don't want to get tanned. So that tanning is actually a good thing. Melanin production is very, very good thing. Uh, of course, it should get produced in a particular limit. If it is more than also, it blocks the entry of vitamin D. So always melanin production is uh, good. And we want to see or we want to study whether these white people could uh, or what amount of melanin is getting produced. If they exposed to sunlight for how much time then within how much time the melanin is getting produced, right? So if the population which I'm choosing is all white color people, then the uh, that type of sample I will get very easily because I just want to uh, see for the white people and I have to select from them. Now the sample can be taken as a representative of entire population because I'm not going to take all thousand people. So I will take few of them. But if the population is not homogeneous, that is if some people are white, some people are near to white, they're not exactly white. And uh, I'm not able to find out that how much white uh, I have to consider. So in that case, that uh, population will have a different characteristics, right? So, uh, it is impossible to get the perfect sample. So I may not get the, I may not get 700 people with the same color. So um, few uh, shading in that color may be there. So you can say that that sample is heterogeneous. So whenever sample is homogeneous, then it is easy to collect the sample. But whenever there is a heterogeneous sample, then it is difficult. Then in such condition, to get better representative, now whenever the sample is heterogeneous, then in such condition, to get the better representative, the sample design you need to alter. You need to make the sample design in a different way. The population is classified into different groups of strata. So in that, I have to make the shading or I have to make the scale that from one to five means they are the whitish one then 5 to 10 or 5 to 7 they are near to white and then 7 to uh, 10 they are uh, more uh, near to the um, what I can say is towards the black so I have to calculate it accordingly make the groups that groups are called as strata and that is what is uh, the name is stratification so make the groups and that contains similar units. So in that group, whatever scale I have decided, all that color people should be there, right? And then from each of these strata, so I have prepared three strata, from each of these strata, uh, a subsample is selected randomly. So I have to select few people randomly and thus all the groups are defined in the sample. So if I'm taking a range for a white color, then all type of people are there right? And then the sample error is reduced. So automatically the sample error will get reduced because the sample is heterogeneous. I'm not going to get the uh, homogeneous sample, right? Hence the subsample size from each stratum is in the proportion with the stratum size. So whatever total population size is there or the heterogeneous group is there, that uh, will get represented properly and thus the, uh, the error will get reduced. Now, uh, the ex uh, there are, uh, there is, I will just give you an, another example of the simple random sample uh, that would be just consider that um, there are uh, 250 employees in a company, they are working 
and uh, just to make the group or to take the song i cannot take or i cannot study the all 250 uh, people or the employees at a time so i have just selected 25 uh, people randomly and i just ask them the question ask whether they are satisfied with the job or they like the job and all those uh, kinds of questions as per my research and uh, i will study it or the, those 25 people will uh, be represented as a sample. So this type of uh, taking sample is called as simple random sampling. Now, uh, as you all know, the lecture I need to stop. So in the next lecture, we will see what are the advantages of the sampling. Till that, bye.